Hey guys, it's Josh Chamberlain from Chamberlain Antiques. And today I wanted to talk to you about early photography. Photography is an exciting field of collecting. Whether you like portraits or landscapes, sports related images, or maybe even the bizarre, there's something for everybody and every budget. <laughs> what was that? That is awesome. You may have heard the term daguerreotype, ambrotype, maybe even tintype, but what are they? How are they made? And how can we tell the difference between them? In order to understand the origins of photography, we have to look back at an object called the camera obscura. A camera obscura is a device whose history goes back thousands of years. Used by artists and scientists, it's a box or even sometimes a small room. With a small hole on one side, it lets in light and projects an image to an interior surface. It's like those cereal box contraptions that people use to view the eclipse. Well, some really smart guys in the 19th century figured out if they applied some chemicals to that interior surface, when exposed to light, it would change permanently and thus create an image. In 1826, Nisiphor Nieps, who was a French inventor, is credited with taking the first known photograph which captured a view out of a window in La Grasse. In 1829, Nieps partnered with a guy named Louis Daguerre, who was also interested in producing permanent photographs. Nieps died in 1833, but Daguerre continued his work and in 1839 perfected his photographic process with something he called the daguerreotype. A daguerreotype was made by coating a sheet of copper with silver and polishing it to a mirror-like finish. After adding some chemicals and exposing it to light, an image was produced. So some of the most obvious characteristics of a daguerreotype are its mirror-like surface and when viewed at an angle, the image becomes a negative. Whoa. A daguerreotype will be housed in a case to prevent the silver from tarnishing. It gives it a similar appearance to the next photograph we're going to look at, an ambrotype. An ambrotype is similar to a daguerreotype, but it's done on a thin piece of glass rather than a sheet of copper. The photographer would coat the glass with iodized collodion and then dip it in silver nitrate. Science. Well, Professor, that science applied to the back of the glass would react with light and create a negative image. A black coating of varnish or sometimes velvet would be applied to the back of the glass and thus give it an appearance of a positive image. So some characteristics to look for when identifying an ambrotype is its case similar to a daguerreotype but doesn't have that mirror-like appearance. Also, it appears to have some depth as you're actually looking through a sheet of glass. The last type of photograph we're going to look at is a ferrotype, or more commonly referred to as a tintype. Tintypes were made in pretty much the same process as ambrotypes. But instead of being done on glass, they were done on a thin sheet of metal painted black. Since they don't tarnish like a daguerreotype or aren't fragile like an ambrotype, you'll often find tintypes loose or sometimes in a photo album. So some things to look for when you're trying to identify which type of old photograph you have is that a daguerreotype will be encased, they have a mirror-like appearance, can appear like a negative image when viewed in the right light, and sometimes show some tarnishing to the silver around the edges. Ambrotypes will also be encased, they are done on glass, and the darker areas can appear to have some depth as you are looking through a sheet of glass to the applied black backing. Finally, a tintype or ferrotype is not cased and it is done on a thin sheet of metal. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you stumble across some photos at a flea market or have some sitting in your attic, Feel free to give us a call or you can visit us online at chamberlainantiques.com.